Today we want to discuss something called partial fractions. Uh, partial fractions is an approach that is taught often in calculus classes. It's a way to decompose fractions to make them sort of easier to work with. Uh, let's start with a typical type of example. We have say 1 over x squared minus 2x minus 3. Now what you want to do with this is let's say you wanted to integrate this. Well you could you know, maybe find a way to do this straight off, but the easiest way to integrate something like this is to take this fraction and say, okay, well, I know that if I factor the bottom, I'm going to get x, uh, looks like x minus 3 and x plus 1. Okay, so you factor the bottom and you then say, let's try to express it like this with some constant over each of the denominator's terms. This breaks it down from a 1 over a second order polynomial to two uh, fractions with a constant over a first order polynomial, which as we know is much easier to integrate. Now what this video is about is not really the sort of standard approach to this, which I'll show you first. Uh, it's more about a, a sort of neat, clever way that we can do these partial fractions a lot quicker um, using a totally legitimate mathematical uh, method that will allow you to sort of get through this much much more painlessly. Uh, it's it's a real help on exams and that kind of situation when you're when you're sort of pressed for time. Um, you don't have time to solve a system of equations. Uh, but let's do the normal method first, which works fine if you have a situation that's nice and easy, uh, such as this one. What we typically would do is we would multiply everything by the denominator here, x minus 3, x plus 1. When you do that, you end up with a 1 on the left side. You have a times x plus 1 plus b times x minus 3. And then you look at this and say, well, whatever this is, it has to hold for all x. And that means that you can pick any given value of x that you want, and a and b have to be consistent for that x. So let's choose an x that makes our life easier. Let's say x equals minus 1. Then what this reduces to is that the a term disappears and you just end up with 1 is equal to b times minus 1 minus 3 uh, and therefore b is equal to 1 over negative 4. Okay, and you do again the same thing for the other terms. So let x equal 3. Uh, and what you end up with is the b term disappears and 1 is equal to a times 3 plus 1. Uh, so the final result is this gives you a is equal to 1 over 4. And now you look back up your equation and say, well, now I know that 1 over this is simply equal to 1 over 4x minus 3 plus uh, sorry, minus 1 over 4x plus 1. Great. So we did that, um, and we got a nice, easily integrable uh, function out. So I was sitting in a differential equations class once, and we were talking about the Laplace transform, which is something that, you know, it's a method for solving differential equations at a higher level. Um, and one big aspect of the, that Laplace transform is that you really have to be able to do some very complicated partial fractions problems. So our prof would write something like this out on the board, let's say this example, and he would look at it, and uh, in fact he wouldn't even write the a and the b, he would just leave it blank, and he would look at this and say, okay, well, clearly uh, we see that we put, have to put a one quarter here, and clearly we have to put a negative one quarter here. And we all kind of whispered to each other saying, how's he doing this in his head? Because even though this is a fairly simple looking calculation, it's still not that easy to do in your head. Okay, so I'm going to show you what my prof taught us uh, how to do this. So we put, like we did before, some constant over x minus 3 and some constant over x plus 1. And I'm just going to write the a and the b here, just to keep things simpler. And I, I'm going to write this all out, uh, the full steps that show the logic behind this. But um, when you get good at this, you can really just look at the problems and talk your way through it and get the uh, answers right there on the spot. 
how this works is it really is the same thing except that you don't have to do any of uh, that kind of algebraic manipulation we did earlier all you have to say is firstly let's say let x uh, let x approach 3 so this is the idea of a limit is that x is getting really really close to 3 not quite equaling 3 the result is that this term becomes negligible the term with a b it becomes negligible because this term grows so huge when x gets close to 3 so if we cross that term out we see that what happens is x minus 3 cancels with x minus 3 and we get a is equal to 1 over x plus 1 but of course when x is approaching 3 this approaches 1 over 3 plus 1 which equals to 1 over 4 okay so I've written out the full logic here let's just talk our way through the other uh, the other example so I'll just erase this um, so with the other case what we're doing is say let x approach minus 1 that way this term with the b becomes arbitrarily large compared to the other term the other term disappears we cancel out the x plus 1 and we're left with 1 over 1 sorry minus 1 minus 3 which is minus 1 quarter so b is equal to minus 1 quarter and this with this method you can sort of just read off the answer just you know straight off now you might say okay this is really just the same thing that we've been doing before um, except that you're doing this in the denominator instead of multiplying everything through. Let's take a look at another example where this approach might be a little more useful. So I've prepared this example. x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2 times x. So this looks a little bit more daunting. Um, the rules of partial fractions, and there, there are many rules of how to approach these questions, but the rules for this one will tell you that because this is really a quadratic term, you have to write a s plus sorry a x plus b over x squared plus two, and this is just a normal term, so you just write c over x, just like we had with uh, previous cases. Now there's a there's one trick that you can apply right away, which is another little. Uh, piece of arsenal that this prof taught us is that you can look at this and say by symmetry I know b is zero now what do I mean by symmetry if you look at the left you see that this is a sum of even functions so the numerator is even this is also even but this is an odd function now an even times an even times an odd gives you an odd function so we know that the left side we have an odd function that means that the right side also has to be odd Note that if b were non-zero, b over x squared plus 2 gives us an even function. So that's not possible. So in this case, b must be equal to 0 by symmetry. So that's a good first step. We're well on our way. Uh, let's take a look now at the easier term, which is c. To tackle c, we do exactly what we did before we say let x approach 0 the left side gets uh, arbitrarily large and the, and the c term gets arbitrarily large but the one that contains a uh, is much smaller in comparison so we can ignore it we then cancel out the x in the denominator and say now let x approach 0 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 2 so c must be equal to 1 over 2 Okay, and we're almost there, just one more coefficient to find. Here's where we pull out one last trick. We say let x approach infinity. What does that mean? That means that in each polynomial, the largest order term is going to dominate. So on the left hand side, you get what looks like x squared over x squared times x. Because this 1 and this 2 are arbitrarily small compared to your x when it approaches infinity. On the right hand side you get ax and again the b even if the b were uh, were non-zero it would still vanish at this point over x squared plus c over x and now we do some canceling and we find out that uh, that indeed this is just 1 over x is equal to a over x plus c over x and so the x's cancel out and we find that a plus c is equal to 1 
Well, we know that c is a half, so a must also equal to 1 half. So I've done this problem uh, not by the traditional method, but I did it using Wolfram Alpha, which is a useful tool uh, at wolframalpha.com uh, by which you can do these partial fractions. And I plugged this partial fraction that we just did in, and I found, yes, indeed, we got the exact answers that we talked about. Uh, note that b is 0, a is 1 half, and c is 1 half. Now, if I were to show steps here, it would show you how you would have to do this by the traditional method. Note, this is exactly what we did before. You multiply everything by the denominator, you collect the terms, then you have to solve a system of equations, because when you have uh, three terms, it gets a little bit more complicated than we, what we had to do before. And this is still the tip of the iceberg. Using this approach, you can greatly simplify partial fractions that have four terms, five terms, uh, six terms that you have to, to deal with. In this case, we just had to solve for a, b, and c, and it turned out that b was zero, as you can see here. But um, when you have a, b, c, d, e, and f, then you kind of get into hot water if you want to do it by this approach. And you'll find if you do it on Wolfram Alpha, the scroll bar becomes absolutely tiny because the solution takes so long to do. So as a recap, what we did here was we allowed x to approach certain values to get close to certain values that made some terms significant and other terms insignificant. If I wanted to, I could have chosen other values entirely, like let x approach 1, and then just solve both sides and see what I get. And that's totally valid. It still gives me useful information. But if you know what to let x approach, say in this case, let x approach 0 so that this term dominates, then it really simplifies things. So I hope this has given you um, a good understanding of a new way to do partial fractions that you might not have thought of before that could really save you a lot of time. Uh, in fact, for that particular course that, that this prof taught, um, there was a question on the final that really you had to use an approach like this if you wanted to get it done in the allotted time. Uh, so this could be really helpful for, for anyone who's having trouble understanding partial fractions uh, or who just wants a faster way to do them.